What's going on YouTube, it's Jason, and today I'm gonna to speak about how to lose weight and keep it off for good. Now, for those of you who don't know my background, I was a really big kid. I'm talking 12 stone at the age of 12. Now, that might not sound that big, but when everyone else your age is like eight or nine stone, it's a lot. But through using the methods and principles I'm going to discuss in this video, I was able to lose my body fat and maintain an athletic physique for the last 17 years. This video is for anyone who would like to lose body fat. Whether you are someone who is obese and you would like to be a more healthy weight, or you are someone who is relatively normal, but you're carrying more body fat than you'd like. The principles of long-term fat loss apply to everyone. So let's dive straight into it. There are four principles which you must grasp if you are going to lose weight and keep it off. The first principle is mindset. Now mindset is so important when it comes to long-term fat loss. It can't just be the old you doing new things. You have to literally become a new person. And under the umbrella of mindset, there are two points. The first is that you have got to stop seeing yourself as fat. Now, I don't mean this in a body positivity or a delusional way, but more how you perceive yourself. For example, when I was obese and I'd overeat, I would say things like, I've always loved my food or said food is my weakness. But that doesn't really help anyone and it just leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy. It means you continue doing the very things that are making you overweight. So when I came to this realization, although I was still overweight, I started to make decisions based on the person I was trying to become rather than the person I was at the time. As you remove your mindset from your current situation to your future self, you start to see progress. And the second point under mindset is striking the balance between realism and empathy and most people get this wrong. I do not want to mince my words when I say this. If you are always feeling sorry for yourself and licking your wounds for being overweight, you are never going to change shape. There has to be a point where you face facts and realize that you are not where you need to be and you need to do something about it. Now, this was a lot more difficult for me to begin with. Because I was so young, a lot of my friends and family were trying to reassure me. You are a growing boy, it's just puppy fat, you will grow out of it. But in order to make progress, I had to silence these voices and face facts. Now to be clear, there's a big difference between realism and self-hate. When I came to this realization, it wasn't me putting myself down or beating myself up for the weight I've gained. I see a lot of people make this mistake. They call themselves fat and put themselves down to get some motivation to do something about it. So it's like a, an icy blue, like a whale. Oh, it's perfect, it's a whale color because I'm like such a fat whale. That is not a good strategy because once you lose the weight and get over that initial hurt of being fat, if you're not rightly motivated, I promise you, you're gonna gain the weight back. Body positivity should not be for a select group of people that are struggling with their weight. Every single person, whether they are athletic or obese, should love the skin they're in, simply because they are an individual and that's where their confidence should come from. But being body positive and taking action are two separate things. We've fallen into this trap with the whole body positivity and fat acceptance movement that if someone is body positive and they decide they want to lose weight, then they suddenly don't like themselves or they hate themselves. But that's nonsense. Someone can love the skin they're in and decide they want to be healthier and live longer and therefore decide they want to lose weight. So strike the balance between empathizing with your weaknesses and shortfalls and facing facts that you need to do something about your weight. Point number two is your approach. Now, most people when trying to lose weight, try and get it off as fast as possible. The amount of times a client comes to me and asks me, I want to lose X amount of weight. How long is it gonna take me to get it off? And I always respond with the same question. How many times do you want to lose it? The reason I say this is because I could recommend unhealthy strategies that could help you lose weight like that but you're gonna regain it all by Christmas and become part of the new year, new me crowd trying to lose it all over again. So what's the point in going through all that effort just to regain it? 
Remember two things, you didn't gain the weight overnight, so you're not gonna lose the weight overnight either. And the second thing is that our bodies are built to survive. So the second you start adopting an aggressive approach, your body will start doing everything to resist you. So even if you do manage to lose the weight and get to your goal, you're gonna feel horrendous afterwards, so your body's eventually going to rebound. So for this reason, I would recommend losing around 1% of your body weight per week. Now, if you're very obese to start, you could probably do about 1.5% initially, but as an average, 1% is about right. Now, that might not be the news you want to hear, and that might mean that you take a little bit longer than you expected, but if you're able to stick that out, you will feel much better at the end of it, and you are far less likely to rebound. Point number three is your habits and behaviors. As I mentioned before, it's not just the old you doing new things. You literally need to cultivate new habits that are going to allow you to maintain a leaner physique. Things like setting weekly goals for your step count and actually sticking to them, and developing a healthy relationship with food so you know when to say yes to food and when to say no, and recognizing that saying no to food is not always a bad thing. We do need to have some discipline. Now, of course, this list isn't conclusive, but the key takeaway here is, if you want to lose weight and keep it off, you can't just be on and off the wagon. You need to actually develop new values and cultivate a new lifestyle. And the final thing is your environment. This is a really important point. You go into most people's cupboards and fridges and it's full of processed snacks, chocolates, crisps, that kind of thing. Now, there's nothing wrong with those things, but if they're there and they're at arm's reach, What's gonna happen when you have a tough day? What's gonna happen when you're feeling low? You're probably gonna end up picking at those things. Remove temptation from around you. Try and minimize the amount of processed snacks in your cupboards and in the fridge. Now for me, this was an absolute game changer. I'm someone who has a lot of willpower. I am very disciplined. But if I buy processed snacks in, it's constantly playing in my mind and just waiting for that one weak moment where I crack. By keeping my environment clear, it means that I'm less likely to binge and that if I do want something processed, I actually have to go out for it. By just putting in that one step, I'm gonna say at least seven out of 10 cravings that I get don't end up getting satisfied because I end up realizing that I don't want that thing as much as I thought I did. Because if I wanted said food bad enough, I would go out for it. If I stay in because I can't be bothered, then I don't want it that much. So that's it, four key principles that have allowed me to lose weight almost 18 years ago and keep it off ever since. Hope you found that video helpful, don't forget to like it, comment below for the algorithm, please subscribe and I'll see you again soon.